Chapter 2 Financial Markets This chapter examines the markets where financial assets are traded. In particular, we consider types of markets, trading systems, settlement, information disclosure and regulation of both UK and the main international markets. We'll examine the financial assets traded in these markets in later down the chapters. The government announced in June 2010 that it intended to reform the institutional framework for financial regulation. A new consumer protection and markets authority will take on FSA's responsibility for consumer protection and conduct regulation. Regulation of banks will pass back to the Bank of England, with macroprudential regulation of banks overseen by the Bank of England and newly created subsidiary of the Bank of England, the Prudential Regulation Authority, conducting microprudential regulation of banks and insurers. Section 1. UK Equity and Fixed Interest Markets Let's take a look at the UK equity market. The London Stock Exchange currently offers two market models for trading UK shares. SETS and SETSQS. Domestic stocks are assigned to market model according to their liquidity and index. To ensure that buyers and sellers are brought together efficiently, SETS is an electronic limit order book. Sets to trade stocks including all FTSC, FTSE all share constituents, constituents, as well as many of the most traded AIM and Irish securities. SETSQS is a trading platform for stocks that are less liquid than those covered by SETS. It combines a periodic auction book along with quote-driven market making. With four uncrossing taking place each day, the uncrossings allow order book execution through auction taking place at opening 11 a.m., 3 p.m. and at closing. SEAQ is a quote display system used as the price reference point for telephone execution between market participants and registered market makers. This is used for fixed interest securities and AIM securities that are not traded on either SETS or SETSQS. Finally, international securities are traded through the International Order Book for Depository Receipts and the International Bulletin Board. And electronic order book for trading international securities with a secondary listing on the London Stock Exchange. The London Clearinghouse, LTH, becomes the central counterparty to all SETS trades at the point of execution. This ensures that clearing members acting on behalf of firms trading on SETS are not exposed to any risk in the event that a clearing member's default LCH assumes the risk itself but manages it by collecting margin from members. This system also operates at NYSC LIFFE. Dual listing occurs when a company's shares are listed on more than one exchange. This is intended to access a wider pool of investor capital and possibly reduce transaction costs for investors through narrower bid offer spreads. Let us now look at GILTs. Gilts. The UK government bond market is commonly referred to as the gilt edge or the gilt market. Although the issued bond carry on, carry a variety of names, i.e. treasury, exchequer, consoles, etc., all bonds are the direct obligation of Her Majesty's government. The government agent issues gilts, which usually pay coupons semi-annually to finance the public sector net cash requirement, that's PSNCR, which is a shortfall between government expenditure and government revenue. This used to be known as the Public Sector Borrowing Requirement, PSBR. In April 1998, the management of the UK government's debt was, passing, was passed to the Debt Management Office, DMO, which is an agency of the Treasury. Approximately 15% of gilts issued are index-linked gilts, ILGS. ILGs. Although now quite rare, the government has chosen in the past to issue gilts via the TAP method, where the issue is announced and investors are invited to tender for the issue. If bidders do not offer the price required by the DMO, that part of the issue is not taken up originally, can be temporarily withdrawn and released slowly into the market, as market conditions become more favourable. In recent years, however, the DMO has begun issuing gilts via an auction, and this is now the favoured method. Issuing gilts by auction is the method preferred in a number of other countries, most notably the US. All gilt holders are now able to receive coupon payments in gross form. Now holding new holdings automatically receive gross tax retreatment, unless the holder indicates otherwise. The main holders of government gilts are UK pension funds, UK insurance companies, overseas investors, UK banks, 
building societies and private individuals. The accrual convention for interest is based on an actual or accrual basis. This means that when calculating crude interest over a period, it is based on the actual number of days since the last coupon and the actual number of days in the coupon period. Although this sounds quite normal, it is not the case in many other overseas government bonds. Gilts no normally go X divided, 7 business days before the coupon, coupon date. UK gilts are now quoted on a decimal basis, where previously they had been quoted in 32 NDS of £1. Gilt settlement is now via CREST, C-R-E-S-T. The key participants in the, U in the markets for the UK gilts are the gilt edge market makers, G-E-M-M-F's, GEMS, who are required by the DMO to make on demand and in any trading condition continuous and effective two-way prices in gilts in which they stand committed to deal. This means that they must continually quote two-way bid and ask prices for gilt issues and must trade at the prices so that the investors always have a source of liquidity. In addition, the GEMMS are expected to participate in primary gilt issuance. Provide the DMO with relevant data about the gilt markets and accept the DMO's monitoring arrangements. For example, the Gilt Edge Market Makers Association, GEMMA, provides the data at the end of the day to the DMO relating to gilt prices. This is where the gilt prices quoted in the financial press come from. In return for providing these services, the DMO makes certain facilities available for the GEMMS gems. These individuals, a special dealing arrangement with the DMO, access to the competing inter- dealer brokerage, IDB, yes, IDBs, an exclusive right to strip and reconstitute gilts with the introduction of the market for gilt strips on the 8th of December 1997. Inter-dealer brokerage, brokers, IDBs, are the intermediaries that market makers use when dealing on their own account. By trading through an IDB, the market makers can be assured of anonymity, anonymity for that a fair market is maintained. When corporate bonds are issued, they may be sold as an open offer for sale or directly to a small number of professional investors, so-called private placing. The former involves a syndicate of banks, with one as lead manager buying the bonds and then reselling them to investors. Hence the sale of the bonds is underwritten by the banks, who naturally charge for the service. If the lead bank buys all the bonds and sells them to the syndicate, this is called a bought deal. The syndicate member could then sell the bonds on at varying prices. More usually, the lead manager and the syndicate buy the bonds together and offer them at a fixed price for a certain period, a so-called fixed price reoffering. Corporate bonds mainly trade in decentralized, dealer-based, over-the-counter markets, with market liquidity provided by dealers and other market participants committing risk capital. When an investor buys or sells a bond, the counterparty to the trade is almost always a bank or securities firm acting as a dealer. In some cases, when a dealer buys a bond from an investor, the dealer carries the bond in inventory. In the UK, on the 1st of February 2010, the London Stock Exchange launched an electronic order book for bonds. This new order-driven trading system offers access to a number of gilts and UK corporate bonds and has been developed in response to a strong demand from retail investors for access to an on-screen secondary market in fixed income securities.